naturally, which is our instinct as human beings, we always tend to think about the, 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 the destination. It's a natural thing. That's why we keep saying to everyone, listen, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Damn it. <laughs> he saw me. He knows I'm here and I'm not getting my blue belt. It was the hardest thing for me. I that? felt terrible because I had expectations, high expectations. So it's like right? an ego is like a fire, right? It's good enough to warm, but if you get too much, you can burn a house. So it's, everyone has different levels of balances. You know, Use techniques of control in a way that if you are holding, that you are you're doing something to you do do something wrong. Replacement is the most important principles for to to have a good control. Welcome back to the Everyday Perspective podcast. Please like the video on the way in and please subscribe to the channel. Today's guest is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu legend, Braulio Estima. Braulio is a fifth degree black belt, is a multiple time world champion and is an ADCC Hall of Famer. Braulio, welcome to the Everyday Perspective podcast. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much, Nani. Uh, great to be here. You know, you just uh, be on a seminar for the Rio charity, mm -hmm. you know, starting the day with, with uh, good vibes and Good to be here. Yeah, amazing. How was the seminar? Good? Yeah, it was really good. I mean, like I showed some principles that have uh, made a big impact on my, on, on my game. Uh, to be honest, I wish I knew those principles a while back, <laughs> yeah. you know, but um, as I, you know, once I learned that everything that you learn in life late, teach as early as possible so you can make people around you grow. Yeah. as much as they can faster. Yeah, amazing. Um, so I don't know if you know much about the podcast. Um, we're obviously talking about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu today, mm -hmm. but we're actually not a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu podcast. It's more of a men's mental health and lifestyle podcast, but we both do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, so naturally it comes up a fair bit. Um, <laughs> But it's one of these things that I feel like it's many things, isn't it, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? It's obviously a martial art, but it's so much more. Mm -hmm. So I'm always interested to get, I guess, a description from someone like yourself who's an absolute legend and pioneer in the in the martial art in the UK. If, if people ask you what Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is, how, how do you answer? Well, uh, as you mentioned, Depo, it's um, Jiu-Jitsu, for me, is a lifestyle, right? It became a lifestyle. But uh, Jiu-Jitsu has um, a lot more than just choking each other out or, you know, try to beat each other up. You know, I think my, everyone is attracted to whatever they do in life for a specific situation. For example, jiu-jitsu uh, attracted me because I wanted to be a competitor. I wanted to be an athlete, you know, and then I felt that I could do something with it. And then as I was improving, I was getting to understand a lot more about jiu-jitsu, right? And... Um, it, it, it changed my, my life for the better, mm. made me to be more cautious what, about what I eat, you know, uh, to look after my health, and um, also, uh, you know, made me to understand that everyone is different in the world and that you should accept the, the way that you are and don't try to be someone else or like someone else, mm -hmm. try to understand uh, yourself within, you know, and this kind of mass, uh, uh, clicks was happening throughout my whole career, you know, and I think one of the biggest uh, lessons you will find that the resilience that you get through jiu-jitsu by being in, in so, many, so many times in on uncomfortable situations, by being there, you start feeling comfortable under a scenario that is very uh, uncomfortable, and therefore you start to understand that um, you can, if you, every time that you panic, things just get worse. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you understand what's the scenario that you at, if you do the right steps, there's always a way out if you don't panic. So those are a little glimpses of what uh, jujitsu can bring uh, to you uh, to, to make your life bad outside of the mats, you know, not, not forget about the friendship that you create with the group, you know, like, for example, the camaraderie, you know, the trust that we, we have to have between ourselves, which, you know, a lot of people I see, um, one of notice that one of friend, uh, uh, the, the wife of a friend of mine, 
wasn't never very huggy, mm-hmm. very like, and then they she start training jujitsu on a very later age, and suddenly the hugs are so much longer, and <laughs> if you feel you know what I mean. Like I think that close contact with uh, with someone else, and you become you, comfortable. It, yes, that. you know it's kind of it's a little bit of vulnerable vulnerability, but at the same time you can start like okay, it's okay to be vulnerable sometimes, and not that everyone is gonna take advantage of, of it, you know. So I think that kind of confidence that you, okay, I have a close contact, but I know I've been here and I know that there's always something that I can do, I guess, if I need to, you know. Yeah, so true. I think uh, the hugging thing is funny. So so he, he, <laughs> when we first started the podcast, he tried uh, explaining what you just said, but in a, in a, like a scientific way, talking about... Yeah. Um, Bio- biochemistry biochemistry and it just yeah. sound, it just sounded super gay though yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I butchered it I butchered it as long as there's no eye contact yeah that's it you know, as long as there's no eye contact you can hug as tight as possible but also that is you exchange energy yeah as well you know I'm very much a believer of uh, energy mm-hmm. and uh, you know it. you can talk about jiu-jitsu in a very profound way in a very scientific way you know we spoke today about that like what I learned in jiu-jitsu is that I can only control what I can do, right? Mm-hmm. And I can try to control someone else, but not necessarily you're going to control everything that you can do, right? But as long as you are always prepared for the worst case scenario. Yeah. So I, I mentioned today, right? And uh, like not only me or my opponent, but anybody can do only three things. You can do something right, something wrong or nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's not down to you. That's down to me to, to, to understand that those three possibilities are real. And we all will depend on the intentions of those actions or not actions, right? Mm-hmm. Because I can only control what I want to do. I cannot control what you want to do or what you want to do. I cannot control if you're going to react correctly or wrongly or not react at all. I cannot control. I can only be prepared for the worst. In fighting, the worst case scenario is if someone does the right thing. Mm. If they do the wrong thing, sorry, mate. Mm. If you don't do nothing, I go through you, mm. right? If you do something right and I'm prepared, then I'm still in the game to carry on the, on the next day. So this is like, you, you can m- metaphorically explain a l- lot of things in, in yeah. the game of life, mm-hmm. you know, because the difference in jiu-jitsu, which I find so beautiful, is that you're always going to have a second chance, right? On the train, on the mat, you tap, you can always have a second chance so you can start kind of uh, processing the importance of accept your weakness, understand your strength and my opponent's weakness and my opponent's strength and understand that when I'm in about to get in a bad situation and when I am in a good situation or when I'm in a very bad situation. Mm-hmm. You need to accept. Acceptance is very important. Also acceptance is very important for, for life too. You know, so many things, man. So many, I, I have learned so much. It blows my mind, mate. I, I've crazy. come into it only a year in, and it just, I ask him so many questions, mate. You must get pissed off of it. Because <laughs> I'm know. like, <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean? But it makes me look, I know something a little bit. <laughs> and but then, it does, it fucking And that's the thing, mind. like, you learn that even though you are not, like, your shape is different than someone that's doing so well. And, and then you go, oh, but he's doing that, but I cannot do that, so this is not for me. So listen, if you understand yourself and don't try to do a step wider than your own possibility, you can make it up things in any how. Like as long as you understand the whys of things, you know? Naturally, we tend to, when I teach someone jiu-jitsu, for example, Let's teach a guard pass. A guard pass is like someone is on top, try to pass the legs, end up on the, on the side mount control to pin the person on the side, right? So when you teach someone a guard pass, naturally, which is our instinct as human being, we always tend to think about the, 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 the destination. Mm-hmm. It's a natural thing. That's why we keep saying to everyone, listen, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Right, because the destination. Once, if you focus too much, the destination is not here yet, you know. And if you're all about the destination, when you get there, you if you get there, 
and then what? What's next, right? So once you understand the principles of that, you have to control, try to take the control of, of, of the fight and the opponents on the process. In worst case scenario, I cannot submit the person, I can still have the control of the scenario. And this mindset is very important for life too, you know? And for to do so, I cannot just copy someone just for the sake of it. You need to try to be intrigued, like a, try to understand why is of things. But why? Why is if it's real, there really will be a why. You just need to be humble enough and to accept, okay, this way I cannot do it. Is there any other way that I can make it up? Yes or no? If yes, try. If not, change something, do something else instead. You know, these kind of lessons. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that that mindset where people focus on the destination too much, do you think that's why a lot of people drop out at maybe Blue Bell and... Yeah, yeah. yeah. 100%. Do you know why? Because they f know how hard it was to get to the Blue Belt, but they really wanted to get the Blue Belt. And that's why a lot of them who quit, they f did everything to get the Blue Belt. And they got the Blue Belt, and then it's no longer destination anymore. Yeah, it became a journey. And then that journey cannot have a stop, you know? It's like, um, I was talking to a very good friend of my CVB, uh, when you say like conclusions and realizations, right? Conclusion has a little stop in the end. I, con I conclude, <laughs> stop. Realizations like, I understand and there's more to come, you know? So that's the thing, when people who tend to quit is because they they took as a conclusion, okay, I'm a blue belt. And now you need to carry on in the past. Because mm. when you get a black belt, I mean, honestly, I, I'm not talking here just to say, when I got my black belt, I didn't feel like a black belt. Mm. I, I was a world champion the first year as a black belt. I didn't feel like I, I was that black belt. Am I that black belt when I was a blue belt I used to look up to? Am I that guy? Because that's what I wanted to be. It took me three years to be able to feel, okay, you know what? I belong here. I belong to be called a black belt that I wanted to be. But I was already two time world champion. <laughs> <laughs> and then so the second place mm. on the I was world champion my first year, second place in the second, and champion on the third. Mm. So what why is that though? Do you feel it's because you didn't I don't know, perform as well? Or was it your knowledge base that you thought you should have known more? Or yeah, to it, be honest, I, I performed very well. Yeah. Is that clearly that, yeah, clearly right. world champion? Like. The, but then I I I, could, I I bring, I brought the fight towards yeah. what I'm good at, and it made things happen, right? Whereas, what if the guy pull, jump on the half guard, which I hated at the time, right. you know? Why maybe not be able even to pass the first fight? We never know, right, you know. Okay. So I felt the point. The common sense was, is that I didn't feel complete. I felt that there's so much to learn, but that's. That will always be yeah, so much. You're never going to stop. Yeah. Because the problem of the journey. Once, there was a story that uh, when I was, I wanted to get a blue belt. And uh, I was, all I was trying to, to achieve was to become the best in my category, in my academy. I want to, you know, be the best there. And then I wanted to go there to beat others. Yeah. To, to be recognized and get my reward, which is the blue belt. And I remember there was a fight, there was a seminar on Friday night, and then I was beating all the white belts at the time, and some of the blue belts too. I said, hey, hey, it's time, I'm gonna get my, my blue belt. I already had three straps on the, on the white belt. Okay, I bought my, my blue belt. You my bought it? I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> right. and, then, and then I was, because at the time there was no blue belts on the academy, right? But still, I wanna just make sure that I have it, you know, usually what they used to do back then was they get a blue belt of somewhere, someone else, and give it to you. You take a photo, then you need to buy a belt. I wanted to be ahead of the game. I buy it. <laughs> so yeah. My own blue Got belt. It. <laughs> Law of attraction, right? <laughs> and then by the end of the the, 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 the class, my the coach, okay, guys, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I said, opa, something is wrong here. He mm -hmm. didn't see me. What's going on here? So I passed in front of him. He didn't see me. I passed him twice. He didn't see me. On the third time, he eye contact. He said, hey, Broly, what's up? Okay, you okay? I said, yes, I'm okay. And then he tried to wait, wait for it. So, oh, okay, cool. So I'll see you tomorrow. I said, damn it. <laughs> he saw me. He knows I'm here, and I'm not getting my blue belt. It was the hardest thing for me. Was I it? felt terrible because I, 
had expectations, high expectations, right? And I was very hungry. I was very hungry because what else you need to me to do? What I mean, I'm tapping all the black, blue, the wood, the blue belts. I'm beating them, and I'm beating some of the blue belts. What else? I got really frustrated, mm-hmm. and I came back home walking like ten minutes, you know, with my gi, and then I, you know what? Forget about this, man. I don't want to do this anymore. Forget about it. I went to the shower, threw my gi, threw my blue belt, and said, I'm not doing this anymore. Give up. Come on, how come I'm not a blue belt? What else do you need to do? I got very angry, right? And then three mo- three days later, I got like, got itchy. I said, oh, I miss it, I miss it, I miss it. And then I started trying to get into terms to myself. I said, okay. And I've, I've always been very honest with myself. And this was one of the reasons that I think I trust myself and then I respect myself because like the honesty leads to trust that leads to respect and then when you do that have it with yourself that's how when you start getting respect and trust from others too because you need to start from yourself right and I was really honest that's like okay I want to go back in train but you're Three days ago, you didn't get what you wanted. You're crying like a baby. You're gonna do that again if you don't get your blue belt next week? No, no, no. Okay, I accept. Okay, I just wanna go there and train. I miss it. Okay, cool. What if you are blue belt, and then one day comes the time that you think you are purple belt? You're gonna be doing that same? No, no, no. I promise. And try to deal with myself. Liaise the situation. And he goes, okay. So what? What you gonna do? if you want to progress on this, because clearly the way that you are doing, by beating the white belts, it didn't get you, didn't get to the blue belt. By beating some of the blue belts, didn't get the blue belt. So what, what are you going to go there for? I said, okay. So if this, by beating others, doesn't give, give me what I always wanted, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to train for be as good as I can be. Instead of trying to beat others all the time, I try to explode all the areas, mm-hmm. you know. And that was a big change for me. That's when, remember, I was training for the destination. I was training to get a blue belt. I was going to the academy to beat others so I can be recognized, so I can be rewarded. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for myself, it was for the belt. It was after these three days of reflection, that's one of the biggest lessons that I had. And then when when I commit myself to go back because I missed it, the environment, I missed the training session, I missed the challenges of every day. And I, I said, okay, so this, from now on, I'm gonna, if everything I did didn't give me the blue belt, so you know what, I'm gonna train because I wanna be as good as I can be. And then I will train so hard, I'm gonna be so good that if we, at some point it's gonna be inevitable that I'm gonna get this blue belt. And if he doesn't give me the blue belt, I'm gonna be the toughest white belt in the whole bloody <laughs> country. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's the, my main goal. Because I cannot go there. There was no possibility to say, can you please can you give me mm. my blue belt? That was out of the condition. We, we, had, we had another, we had uh, Miko from Chokes and More. I don't know if you've seen him. He does, uh, he does uh, like a big Instagram following and um, he just got his black belt, but he talked about that. Uh, his friend got promoted before him who he was better than. He asked his coach why he didn't get promoted, put an extra year on. Yeah. <laughs> he was a white belt for, well, for three years, wasn't he? Yeah. But that's the thing. Why, what I realized, I realized that, yes, I was beating others, but maybe I wasn't beating the way that that will be with longevity, way of fighting, a, a, a way that I was going to be productive when, I, in the, when I'm a brown belt man, maybe, you know? And I realized that, like, it's not about beating or, or, or others, or, or losing to others. How do you beat others? How do you lose? Are you losing trying to do something that eventually is gonna be strong? Because mm-hmm. it's about try and, try and error. You, you have to f- understand the language of jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. You have to understand your body, and you understand the principles of it. That is not only about what you wanna do. You need to deal with my people, my opponent's reactions. You know, and he can react different ways so I need to be always prepared for the worst blah 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 so you, when you understand the language it takes time and then everything that I was doing not everything but a lot of the things I was submitting people with I was very monotonous I was doing the same thing over and over again that not necessarily is going to work out against a black belt eventually so I realized that on my journey you know but I, at the answer I realized on my journey but my my, my realization on that time when I decided to come back to train as a white belt and say, you know what, I'm going to train to be as good as I could ever be, man. It's for the first time I had so many 
weight out of my shoulders because I, I didn't go to train to impress no one anymore. Because when I, I did everything to impress, I did everything that I should to impress and I didn't get the, what I wanted. So now, you know what? I'm going to enjoy the, the, the journey. Mm -hmm. You know what? I will train areas that I am not so confident, mm -hmm. that need work, because now I don't care if the guy passed my guard anymore because I'm not gonna, I didn't get the blue belt anyway, <laughs> right? So at least I expand in other areas. Guess what? Three months later, I got my blue belt and then boom, 20 years later, and I'm five degree black belt and time passed like that. And, uh, but that realization was one of the most important lessons for my whole life in, uh, in jiu-jitsu and outside you. Yeah, no, that's really good advice. And, and thinking about competing, obviously you've, you were a prolific competitor back in the day, got some amazing titles, multiple time world champion. What advice or, or what do you attribute your success in competition to? Is it that same mindset or is it sort of um, something different? So look, I, I have been studying a lot about myself, trying mm. to connect the dots. You know, and then when I when I got my uh, award, the Hall of Hall of Fame at the ADCC, uh, 2020, uh, it was to, to, in the last ADCC, 2022, 20, oh, well, last year, yeah. September. Year, yeah. Oh wow! Look back. So it's, it looks so far away. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last year, so I got this uh, this award of the Hall of Fame for ADCC, right? And I look back, flipping like. Huh? How the hell that happened? You know, I'm from a small city in Brazil. I'm not from a city where all Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belts. I, I never trained for black belt until I was a brown belt, mm -hmm. right? And I was the uh, oldest generations of my of my town. And then I go like, man, I came from nothing. It's like a homeless becoming a millionaire. And then how? So I start trying to connect the dots, you know, because a lot of people ask me this question: What's the secret of the success and stuff? I think there's a lot more there. Uh, than I have said previously, and I'm trying to to go into deep situation on that. And then I feel I think always well, like being honest with myself and accept by being honest, accepting the, your scenario. I didn't have black belts around. Mm -hmm. Okay, so accept that, you know, and do what you can to become as good as you can be. That was my always goal, not be better than anybody. Roger Grace is my best mate. I, I never aim to be better than him. You know, I aim to be as good as I could ever be. If this means me being better than him or not, it's independent. It's about my own limit. It's my own uh, potential. Reach my full potential, my prime. That's what my goal, right? And uh, be honest with yourself, you know. Uh, uh, then you trust in yourself. Then you respect yourself, then you have to act with the intentions of doing something right, you know? And, and like we say, uh, Master Carlos Gracie Sr. says, like, there's no losing jiu-jitsu. Either you win or you learn. But that's only if you have the intention to learn or to win. If you don't have the intentions to do it right, when you do wrong, you don't want to notice no difference yeah. but when you have the intentions to do it right and even when you do it wrong you go you you, you understand you, you you tick the boxes you know and this is the beginning of everything is the, being honest with yourself and and then don't do to others what you don't want to do to yourself it's, it's if you see it's, can be like Jesus said that didn't it like yeah. in, in, in a way yeah. like someone gets me in an amber okay would you like him to crank it? No, no so don't do crank the others because that connects more people. And if you had, like, there was a day um, I was in Rio for the first time and uh, Carlos Gracie Jr., uh, I, I lost my first fight. I went there to compete. I was uh, like, um, you know, it was 97, the Brazilian championships. I lost my very first fight. And then before, I spent a week there training and for the first time I saw black belts, I was like, oh my God, man, so many black belts on my, I saw Hicks and Grace for the first time. I was like, <gasps> I was like completely, you know? And then uh, I lost the fight on Sunday, on the first fight of the, the Brazilian championships. And my flight was on Monday night, but on Monday morning I was the academy. I wanted to be there because I wanted to suck as much information as possible, right? And then when I went there, I was the only one of my team that was there that went to train. 
when I look, the academy empty because it's just the day after the tournament. Mm-hmm. And guess who is there? Carlos Gracie Jr. <gasps> He's looking at me, he's seeing me, whatever. Oh my God, I'm training. He's classic. Hey, hey, campeon. He was saying, so champ, hey, champ, can you go with this? He goes, oh my God, he's talking to me. And then <laughs> and then I start like, okay, no, I'm going to do my best, man. I want to train my best. And then I train my best, blah, blah, blah. And then the end of the, the, the end of the class, he goes, hey, champ, come here. What's your name? I said, oh, my name is Braulio. I said, oh, where are you from? I'm from the Recife. He said, mate, I really like the way that you fight. Carry on. I go, <gasps> Bro, that meant a lot more than a medal. And I never told that to nobody because I had already a little, uh, uh, like, uh, I wasn't confident that people, a lot of people used to take the mic if I say something that they cannot do because we are teenagers, you know. Ah, come on, of course you can do, bro. But honestly, I could, but, you know, in, in other things in life. And I picked the mic out of me. So I was a little bit, like, complex about saying things. So when he told me, I didn't tell nobody because I, the same way in life, if I say some people, I'll come, okay, so you go there to, to Rio de Janeiro, losing the first fight, but Carlos Gracie Jr. came and said that, blah, blah, blah. But it didn't matter to them. Yeah, it yeah. mattered to me a lot. Yeah. And this is another principle that I under learned how important to give people some, like, you know what, well done. This is good. You know, show, share to people, mm-hmm. you know, because sometimes... I remember myself then. I was such a lost kid. I didn't know exactly if this what I was doing was jiu-jitsu or not. But when Carlos Gracie came to me, I said, listen, carry on. You do that goes, really? So, okay, maybe I'm doing everything rubbish, but it gotta be something in the right, right direction because otherwise you wouldn't so, yeah. come out. So in that became in me because I know how much it meant to me. So every time on my journey that I could help people that I could, especially when I start teaching, it made my understand jiu-jitsu so much better. So what's the principle behind? The more you share, the more you learn about even the things that you develop yourself. Mm-hmm. Because the more you share, the more you think about, the more you, but you need to share with the intentions to make the real impact on people because when the question comes honest question and you have the honest answer you will start understand more about the technique and even if you should carry on apart uh, from a certain situation or not because you learn okay that's a good question maybe this one cannot work on those scenarios so then you go okay this is good up until this scenario but when that scenario happens I need to respect because now I know because now I I I broke down in a way so that's what is being one of the main secrets of for my success is like focus on the, give the best what you can you know don't re- so you don't regret later you know and train to be as good as you could ever be but not being better than someone else mm-hmm. try to understand yourself within because if you don't understand how you move how can you manipulate someone else mm-hmm. You know, because jujitsu is a two people fight against each other. It's a conflict of interest. You know, you need to manipulate someone else to get him in a, st- a stuck position. You can make him tap. So how can you do this to him if you don't know how to do it to yourself? Mm-hmm. So you recognize, appreciate your your flaws and your attributes, accept it, and work around it. And it's that's a lot more because mm-hmm. this if it was so simple, answer. Yeah. You know, but I am trying to, I have already 32 principles that is important to to be successful in anything in life. Mm -hmm. You know, I I don't have here in mind because I'm I'm, I'm writing it down. I'm making a, I'm making something about it. And uh, uh, it's very interesting because some people, even though like when you ask, you asked me this question, right? Someone asked me uh, a while back ago, and it's oh, it's determination, never give up. You know, I need to, you know, be uh, focused on, you know, on the on the journey, and blah 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 blah. And the guy said, "Oh man, that's so interesting," because Steve Jobs said something very similar. I said, "Dude, but I don't even put my mind into work, so that must be a lot of things here that means I'm missing." You know, and uh, you know, there's a friend of mine that he's very good on choking, cross choke collar. You know, Roger Grace. You know, <laughs> you know? very good. He tapped everyone on the, on the mountain in 2008, and uh, he's my best mate. I trained with him all my life in jiu jitsu. You know, we, we have I have full access to him, and um, he's uh, the goat. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and um, it happened that he tapped everyone from the mountain in 2008, and then I asked him, when he came back, I said, mate, come on, I'm good in the mountain, but I don't, I cannot do that submission, I can only go from Katagatame and then some armors, and, but this man, he tapped everyone, come on, can you show me? So, he will show me everything, like how he, what he understands that's his success. He showed me everything, and he goes, you do this, and he's all flipping heck, that's crazy, I wasn't doing that. Let me do it on top of it, boom, he bumped me over, so, ah. so it's because he's strong or he's heavier. Look, now I'm having the second chance after asking, after seeing him being successful, I've been training with him all my life, and after having that chance, that free, I had to have the second chance, and this time I was thinking, why I cannot move? And his his hips was blocking my hand, and um, he didn't think much of it because mm -hmm. he was focused on the collar things. I said, "Damn, is this hand here?" So is it? He wasn't even like a hundred percent. He knew was there, but he wasn't. He he wasn't. Uh, he didn't put as such. Uh, highlight of the reason why his joke is so effective. But for me, a mere mortal, you know, <laughs> that hand was everything that I couldn't control. Now, I don't have these hips that he has. I don't have the legs that he has. I don't have the length that he has. But at the same time, I know that if I find somehow to control that hand at the same time, I have a better chance of being more successful in the joke if I carry on that control through the process. And guess what? He did better. And today I can control better because I understood that principle because I was on the other side. So now I had all my career plus realize how good it was in the competition of Roger. I had the access to him. He had two chances to realize that something that he wasn't even think was so important. But how important it was for me was that. And then now I can. So when that's my, my quest now. My quest is I'm trying to figure out connecting the dots of my past of success story in jiu -jitsu as a competitor going from that white belt away from black belt to be able to be a Hall of Fame and try to connect the dots and try to get as many principles as, as possible to understand what is the first step that anybody can do mm -hmm. and how you can achieve success understand the principles and applying those principles so be tuned yeah, yeah amazing <laughs> can't wait to see that um, can I talk to you about longevity a little bit yeah. because I think we're a similarish age slightly more mature gentleman should we say <laughs> um, I like that <laughs> <laughs> obviously Jiu Jitsu is a very long journey never ending for, for, for many people over time you get a lot of mileage on the body you mm -hmm. get a lot of injuries I think you've had your fair share over the years mm -hmm. now you're getting all these younger guys coming through uh, Jiu Jitsu is, is obviously ever evolving like how do you uh, how do you kind of look after your body and, and keep up with the sort of younger generations now? Have you got any advice for uh, men Yes, I mean, I'm going through that myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a very bad neck injury. You know, I, I cannot just, you know, get to the academy and just fresh and let's go roll with all the best guys like I used to, you know. Age gets you, you need to accept. You need to be honest. You need to understand that your body, you know, and the body that I have now is not the same body that I had when I was in my prime, and, and therefore I have my limitations, you know, I have my limitation of my neck, I have my limitation of my shoulders because it's affected by my neck, but that doesn't stop me training. I just need to be, like, take the ego out of, because uh, the ego, right, is the biggest challenge of the humankind, right? That's the, the ego that uh, brings us to possessions, the ego that we have to control, right? And then and try to take advantage of others or to show off. It, there's so many things that the ego brings that can be detrimental. But at the same time, without the ego, you cannot put yourself. So it's like if ego is like a fire, right? It's good enough to warm, but if you get too much, it can burn a house. So it's, everyone has different levels of balances. You know, everyone is different. Like, for example, you see the popcorn. Popcorn, you can get this the popcorn, uh, the, the, the corns of the same cob, but when you put it for to make it popcorn, they always pop on the different times. They never pop at the same time, even though they come from the same place. So everyone is different. Everyone will pop in a, in a, in a different times. That's why you cannot uh, compare yourself with others. Have others as a reference. 
and bring yourself as the comparison to yourself, to yourself yesterday, yourself last month, yourself yeah, yeah, last year. You know, like if you want to see if, how you should, how you are. Okay, am I on the right path or the wrong path? Compare yourself from today and last year, or the five years ago. You know what I mean? Sometimes you not feel like ah, oh, I, 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 I can I can do better. I can do better. I can do better. Okay, cool. But where are you now? Deep now. Look how I was five years ago. And I'm, so be more appreciative. You know, accept and understand. Now, injuries. I have limitation of my neck. So I not going. I'm not going to be using my neck as I used to because I know that if I keep using, I'm going to get injured and I won't be able to train tomorrow. So. I, one thing that I am on the challenge myself now is preparing my uh, working out outside of jiu-jitsu because I never liked it as my, uh, to do training weight training. I, I, I it's something that I hated. That's because <laughs> I am brawler. You know, you Bo, you Danny, maybe you love it. I, but, that, I don't, but that's me. So I need to understand at the same time that for me to carry on how I used to just train jiu-jitsu, just train jiu-jitsu without something else to compensate, I have to do sacrifices, you know, because it's, you know, also is one good point. You got to sacrifice to be able to be successful, successful in things, you know. Love, when in, in relationship, you, that is sacrifice to be able to have a successful uh, uh, relationship with your kids, if you have, you have kids or not. So, like, you know, you sacrifice so much to be able to have a good relationship, with, but it's worth it, right? But that's the thing. So now I need to sacrifice that time that I, I wouldn't like to be doing weights, but I need to do so my body is in a good form so I can carry on training. Mm -hmm. Because in Jiu-Jitsu, you put yourself in so many bad situations. So you need to do something to invert that to kind of get you the longevity. So my realization is that I need to accept that my body is no longer the way that it used to be. And I have to act with the intentions of doing right to find ways to give me that longevity. And that's what I have been found, finding myself, you know, is respecting, okay, my knee is, is bad. You put in a situation that my knee is going to get locked. Oh, good, good. Let's do it again. Remember, in jiu-jitsu, you always have the second chance. Do it again next time. Don't let it get that far. Because it... You shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't be fighting to escape from a lock that's already on. You shouldn't allow the lock to get that far. So if, you def if you're fighting to your arm to get up, you did something wrong before already. So, okay, out, let's go again. And next time I don't let you get that close. And that's how you learn. And then choose your partners, be honest, communication, you know, the ego, deal with the ego. Okay, ah, uh, the ego is important to keep you going, but find the balance according to your your body. Mm -hmm. You know, myself, if someone is about to pass my guard and I feel that position, I will use my neck in a way that I can be sore tomorrow, pass your guard, but you're not going to tap me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try to get out. Ah, he tapped me. Damn. Next time, I will change this side because if he goes to the other side, it's much better. I'm going to mm -hmm. try to this time now. Oh, it was worse. Go back and have fun. Yeah. You know, have fun. It's time to appreciate and enjoy Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, great. I'll uh, make some notes of that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I talk. I talk a lot. No, it's great. <laughs> um, what, what, what do you think about the evolution of Jiu-Jitsu? You mentioned about, obviously, sort of the leg locks there, for example. I guess from when you started, it probably looks, in some ways, a completely different martial art compared to what you see now. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the, the yeah. evolution of it? I mean, jiu-jitsu is a never-ending growth, right? There's so many possibilities, you know. If you see the op the options of techniques that that is in boxing, for example, you know, that's a lot of combinations. You see two guys fighting each other, okay? You have, only can use one arm or the other and move the head in steps, right? And you know that when this arm is straight, this here, this goes straight, and then you can have the hook, they have the uppercut. This is about what? No, no, let's say eight possibilities mixed together. You still get people knocking each other out because it's hard to map all the possibilities. You're giving eight, eight techniques mixing between themselves. Now imagine Thai boxing. Now you have the legs together now. Now imagine Jiu Jitsu, flip and neck. It's arms, so much legs. I can submit from the neck from, to the toe hole, <laughs> yeah. right? I can attack from the bottom and on top. It's 360 degrees 
with the floor as a reference, as the mess as a reference. So there's so many things. So you're never going to stop improving. So all you need to be focused on is understand the principles of everything because every every a, a complex technique has basic principles, you know, and that's what it is. And then, of course, I I, I love to see the growth. I see, like, I'm part of, of it. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, we've been developing new things like the steamer lock, the inverted triangle at the time, you know, like, and then on and on and on. And today, the techniques of understanding principles of how to keep the clampings on the right spot. And this is... a. Uh, it will never stop. And then there will be trending mo mo uh, times, for example. It's just like fashion, you know? For me, a seminar is like a fashion week. You go there, you get the the, the insp what the designer is inspired by. Okay, this is the trend that I'm looking for, the concepts, the princ the concepts that I'm working on. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna get this concept apply in my way and develop. That's how, how it is. And uh, when, you, when you see, the, the the growth of the jiu-jitsu is the same. Like nowadays, you see the seventies fashion sometimes comes up with the the legs open the on the bottom. I used to take the mic out of my dad. I see picture of him like those bell bottoms and nice. yeah, <laughs> the, the bell bottoms. Oh my dad, how, how can Boot you do cuts. that? But when I look the pictures of me and Roger oh, when we were twenty two years <laughs> ago. God, man, how the hell? And I see my kids today with those heads, whatever. So, oh, you're going to regret so much. <laughs> see the that. But that goes in back fashion. You know, like, for example, when X Guard came in with Marcelo Garcia doing a lot of people, oh, getting caught. Now people don't even get caught with X Guard. Mm -hmm. And it came the the footlocks, the heel hooks. Oh, my God, heel hooks. Now people start to understand the heel hooks. It's about, and by the more people understand all the possibilities, as many possibilities, they be more aware that there is a common denominator of everything. The same way of the success, there's a common denominator. It's always about the how you understand the language, how to talk to yourself. Like you know, like the 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 the, the thing of visualization, the secret book. You know, when you uh, visualize, you, you you manifest. That is a, a language, how you think about a problem. Something happens, you go, oh my god, you know this. Why this has happened to me? You attract something. Mm -hmm. I say, okay, cool. Go on, pass. Let's not get panic. Okay, cool. Chill. Let's not do this again. Understand why it happened. And let's move on. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody's dead yet for this reason. So let's be happy that we are alive and let's move on. Mm -hmm. That's how it is in, in, in jiu-jitsu. You, know? you just need to, as you go, learn and, and, and take the notes and keep in applying. Yeah. You know, it makes sense because I, sometimes I go around the circle. No, no, definitely. You know? Yeah. Um, I think I know the answer to this already because you've already mentioned it a couple of times. But over the years, you've obviously competed against you know, most of the old greats. Um, you obviously have a number of students. You do a number of seminars. Who's sort of rolling or competing? Who's who's the, the, the toughest role that you've ever had? Yeah, for sure, it's Roger. Yeah, well, you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> like Roger has been my toughest and my my most enjoyable yeah. training. You know because it's. Uh, when we when we been through the head to head parts when we discovering our jujitsu, you know, he we push each other. He pushed me a lot to be what. I, to be honest, funny enough, I was talking to him the other day. He said, have, he used to be a guard player when he used when he came here to UK, and then he's the one. He's the best pass in the world. And I realized I, I was playing on the bottom, and pushing him to. On, be on top and then he, he enjoyed being on top and then enjoy being on the bottom and we push each other and I learned so much for both ways you know it, it's it, it's it's very uh, he's um, uh, a guy that I've always liked to, to learn from and we are same age similar age and you know we we have we complement each other very well you know he's more calmer than I am and I'm, I'm more crazy than he is and we kind of are trying to understand each other and find through jiu-jitsu and then becomes a very nice and comfortable chess mm -hmm. game you know even though we have a, a lot of a, a, a physical interaction mm -hmm. but it's a lot more mind games than actual physical games because mm -hmm. we know that as if i have that grip I know that he cannot do what I know he could 
I guess me. And he put me in the angle that he also now, he knows that because I put myself this angle, that grip also now I cannot do much. And it becomes very much how I can position and get the one step ahead before mm -hmm. and capitalize. Yeah. It's very, very challenging, but it's really nice. Yeah, it's cool. I do a little bit of training with uh, Henrique Jr. Uh -huh. I'm up at uh, HGA Morgate when I'm in London working. I know Jr., yeah. Yeah, he's, he's a good guy. He's, he, he, he's good. He's good as long as he's on the top. He's really good as long as he's not on top of you. On the yeah. same course. <laughs> Thankfully, he's, he's very playful and rolling, so it's fine. Um, with, with that pressure game, because this is something that we come across a little bit as so bigger lads, especially when rolling with, with smaller teammates. And we, we try so hard not to use strength and yeah. use physical attributes, but yeah. obviously speed and agility are also attributes as well. Like, wh where's the right balance in regard to kind of using that as an attribute? I know obviously technique, you know, overcomes strength, but what is the right amount of pressure to use? Yes, I mean, like, size does matter, of course, okay? It doesn't matter if the weaker knows jiu-jitsu and the other one doesn't. That would be no difference. If it's the size won't matter, if you know. But if there is the same amount of knowledge, size will matter. That's why there is divisions, right? That's why there is a black belt division from lightweight to super heavyweights, and that's the absolute. You know, the, if you see statistically talking, there there is no many lightweights that beats. The big mm -hmm. on the absolute, there's always heavyweights, middle heavyweights. Mm -hmm. That's the majority of the champions. So the number says it all. So, but when when you learn jujitsu and you are the stronger one, it is going to be difficult for you to kind of uh, update, like you know, fine tune yourself to be like a flying like a featherweight because you're not a featherweight, and then you tend to use what you've got in your hands and if you have strength you're gonna use your strength but the balance in between it, it's like you should be able to hold the whatever the position that you are holding the person you should be able to use leverage to support the grip that you had because look how long can you hold yourself on the on the cloth of hanging yourself it's gonna get a time that well, after five minutes, <laughs> not, I can even one minute to be yeah. honest, you know. But unless those guys CrossFit guys or the kinesthetic people, at some point you're gonna go. So we cannot be using this all the time. We need to kind of uh, use techniques of control mm -hmm. in a way that if you are holding, that you are you're doing something to you don't do something wrong. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be ah, ah, if something is wrong. You know, so if this is happening, let it go yeah. and go to another another base. And of course, this comes with experience. Mm -hmm. You know, but the balance is: if you are whole, spending too much energy and you feel it, something is wrong. You got to breathe, and we try to use points of reference. For example, neck control, head control, wrist control, hand control. If I stop the wrist or hand. My body doesn't go. If I just if this is free, then I can let it go, you know. And then if you hold here, the press pulling, you pulling back, yeah, you was in strength. Whereas if I'm here, the press you don't use, you're just following compression. You know, if I compress it, you know, what I mean, I cannot move. Instead of going to go, uh, just lean on it. But this comes with the experience, you know. Understand lev levers and edges to control. If he cannot start, he doesn't develop, mm -hmm. right? So if he can't start, he can develop. Mm -hmm. So if you're on top of him and you just put the hand, uh, your weight on the wrist and this can start, this I can create a lever. Whereas if you lean here, go, oh, mm -hmm. some things also capitalize and replace. Replacement is the most important principles for to, to have a good control mm -hmm. and we tend to let it go what we had too soon because you want to go next mm -hmm. you know or you passed I'm here and you let it go but the reason that you're here because once you had that so you cannot just let it go and go for that you need to replace so I still be able to carry on mm -hmm. this is more important on, on the on the journey to re figure out the ways how to control my opponent, how I can replace 
and he cannot develop and I can. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's complex. It's very difficult. Imagine yeah. it. it's the whole it's universe. So much there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. What do you call it? Control the head of the snake, right? That's what yes. You call it. Yeah. So you're saying yes. that today, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. The head of the snake is one of the most important principles, man. Yeah. If you cannot, like, if you hold the wrist, my body moves, but if I, the hand doesn't start, it doesn't go nowhere. Whereas if I'm holding here, then I can start, and then now you're fighting harder. And um, yeah, it's with the head control, understand as well. But this comes down to uh, your experience. If you sir, if you go training with the mindset to look for those answers, even if you sometimes you're gonna look at it and you go, oh okay, that's interesting. I don't do it this way, and then you see what's happened to the opponent. That's the more important thing. Akimura. And a normal platter, which is a shoulder lock, is the same thing, mm -hmm. done different. Mm -hmm. What so look for what's happened to the opponent, and then try to figure out different ways to do the same, and then you learn a lot about jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect, brother. If someone's watching and they've not done jujitsu before and they're thinking about it, what would your words be to them? Well, um, some people will find attractive jujitsu, some others won't. Um, I feel like if you want to give it a try, look around, the, 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 do your research on the academies to get an academy that is safe, you know, good environment, that the professor, it's uh, rigid, and, uh, you know, explore, you know, there are so many academies out there now that has ladies class only, you know, there's others that has, uh, you know, class for older people or it, 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 it just goes to the basics, you know. It's important for you to give an experiment with that open mind to not, not only go in there for to get beat up or beat others up because that's not the way that you're gonna learn. You know, there are many different reasons why people train. People train to go, to go for jiu-jitsu, for socialize, for for uh, learn something new, to exercise and to get inspired. Yeah. You know, there's so many options that you can take out of jiu-jitsu. You know, to go to the uh, on your area, check an uh, academy that you go in a field so you can experience and uh, give it a try. Maybe you're going to find that this could be your new passion. You never know. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Brother, we'll let you go, mate. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you very Appreciate much. It, by the way. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Danny. Thank you. Appreciate it.